Hey guys, I just want to do a little disclaimer before today's show. Um, I got a new computer the other day, and for some reason, the new version of Windows does not come automatically loaded with Windows Movie Maker, which is what I use to edit the video uh, and edit the audio together, actually. So if you're listening on YouTube, you're going to notice the little watermark, Windows Movie Maker. Uh, apparently, you have to pay if you want Windows Movie Maker. And since this show is more of a hobby, I don't make money from it, I'm not really willing to invest money, even though it's not that much, to get the watermark removed. I might maybe in the near future do it, but for now, I'm just gonna live with it, mainly because this is an audio podcast mainly, and I just put the pictures up for the video version of it. It's not a big deal, at least in my eyes. If you feel otherwise about it, you can email me at dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com, and I'll respond back, give me money so I can get it removed. You'll respond back, no, and I'll respond back, okay, conversation over. And that's how to go, guys. But again, just a little disclaimer, letting you know there's nothing wrong with your computer. There's something wrong with my computer and the fact that I'm just so po. So on that note, enjoy the episode. Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon. And while you're there, go ahead and like, rate, review, subscribe. Then head on over to the Facebook group and Twitter account and join in the discussion. Don't forget dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. If you have a question or a comment, hit us up there and maybe we'll talk about it on the show. Well, hello everyone. Well, it is a lovely, lovely Friday evening here in Austin, Texas. And I uh, just got done watching Clone Wars with the Mistress of Mandalore here, Miss Lisa Locke McGahee. Hello. And Lisa, I'm so glad you could take the time from trying to figure out my personality type <laughs> to join us for this discussion. It's not just your personality type. It's, super, it's a whole other discussion. It's a whole other discussion that is not part of this discussion because this discussion is, of course, about Star Wars. That's what we like to talk about in this household is a never-ending discussion as is. And we got a lot to talk about, a lot to dissect this week because some big Star Wars news came out. Well... Some people would call it big Star Wars news. I would call it big Star Wars news. I would call it big Star Wars news. No, 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 big Star Wars news as well. But then again, we're uh, probably bigger Star Wars fans than, you know, 99.9 of the population that, out there anywhere. That might be a little bit pushing it. What? 99.8? I'm just saying. We don't have, like, an entire house full of Star Wars tchotchkes. Well, that's true. We don't collect the figures just for the so, sake of collecting the figures. We're not so. 99.9%. Okay, then, I'll put us so. at 99. How about that? I mean, <laughs> if you think about the entire population of the world, we're definitely in the 1%. Anyway. Okay, anyway, guys, yes. Yeah, so, Star Wars news came out today. Uh, I'm just going to dive right into it, kind of give an overview of it. Now, for months, we were teased, even going back to Celebration, back in April. Yeah, cause, well, because... And I think what the the difference is we went to several of the panels with the authors. Uh-huh. So they were talking about Project, Project Luminous. Luminous. Like they were being super cagey about it. Like they wouldn't say anything. They just said it's something coming. So those of us who went to the book panels at Celebration knew something was coming. Something big. That was going to involve lots of different Star Wars authors. So I think for people like us, this wasn't such a... We've been expecting this. Yes. People who didn't go to those panels... Or have been following Or it. haven't... Right. Are like, wait, what? So Yeah, they had no idea what this was. And of course, when it came out that it was just going to involve books and comics, some people were disappointed. Which, again, I say, you know... Read uh, the books and re- you won't re- be disappointed anymore. <laughs> I was going to say, follow the news closer, but... And that, that read the books. Okay, read the books. And you won't books. be disappointed. I mean, 
I don't want everyone to read the books because then celebration, it's going to be harder to get into the book panels, and I really like to go to those because they're not but as hard to get into. That that's what I that's yes. what I mean. Like if more people read the books, then those panels are going to become more difficult to get into. Okay, which I don't want. So but are you saying people read them or don't read I, them? I can't decide. I'm torn. Oh, I'm she's torn. torn. Okay. Well, let's just get into it, guys. Okay. So Monday night, uh, we finally found out what Project Luminous was. Turns out it is something called Star Wars High Republic. Now you can learn all about it on StarWars.com. Got links going from uh, the Facebook group and I think uh, the Twitter account as well. Uh, but it's kind of an overview of it is it's a collaboration in Lucasfilm Publishing. Um, it's not just Lucasfilm Publishing. Well, hold on. It's- can I get to it, please? Okay. It's Disney Lucasfilm Press Delray. IDW Publishing and Marvel. So again, going across the books and the comics. And Star Wars High Republic is going to be something that is set 200 years before Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Where it's kind of going to be, uh, what I want to say, the golden age of the Jedi, as they would call it. Quote, Star Wars High Republic features the Jedi as we've always wanted to see them, as true guardians of peace and justice. This is a hopeful, optimistic time when the Jedi and the Galactic Republic are at their height. But of course, into this glorious new era, something wicked this way comes. Talking about, quote, this was a golden age for the Jedi and also a time of galactic expansion in the Outer Rim. So expect there to be rich tales of exploration, charting out the galaxy, meeting new cultures, and discovering what pioneer life in the Outer Rim was like. Again, what happened was a bunch of writers got together that have worked on Star Wars, um, brought together by Michael Singlin, Lucasfilm Publishing Creative Director, brought together several writers who have worked on Star Wars, uh, being Charles Soule, who did the uh, Marvel Comics Darth Vader, Star Wars and Poe Dameron run, Kevin Scott, who did Dooku Jedi Lost and Tales of Vader's Castle, Claudia Gray, who did Master and Apprentice, Lost Stars, Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Lots of great ones. Uh, lots of good ones, of course. Justina Ireland, who did Lando's Luck, and Daniel, Daniel Jose. Daniel Jose. I did Older. say that right. You said Danielle. Did I? Daniel. Daniel. Sorry, Daniel. It's a dude. Sorry, dude. Jose Older, who did Last Shot. They came together, and this was several years ago. But it ago. wasn't just them that came. These well, there's the several other, too. Right. These they're, are the ones that are going to be writing the first. Exactly. But, you know, people. A lot came together. A lot came together, as well as people from the story group, like Pablo mm-hmm. Hidalgo. If you watch the video, um, the, you know, kind of the it announcement was a big video. Room. As big group of people, a lot of people uh, having uh, in there. And, of course, the thing I love is just, just that board. Brainstorming. You know, yeah. that brainstorming where they have the three divisions of. You know what they want to see in fiction, what they believe uh, what Star they Wars, Star what they Wars. love about Star Wars, and what they want to see in Star Wars. And again, Did that they, say dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, yes. Oh <laughs> man, Twitter has been blowing up about that all the time. Dinosaurs, <laughs> yes. So they came together, threw out all their ideas, spent months and months, you know, thinking of this, and came up with the High Republic. And like I said, it's going to be across comics and books. For all ages. Now, the first one... Can I say something really quick about this? She's timing out. She's timing out. Go for it. About this board. So, um, I think it's interesting. So, some of the things... Some of the the negative things that we've heard from people about this announcement was that... Why are we going back? We need to move forward. And our response to that has always been, how do you move forward? Because what people love about Star Wars is the Jedi. Mm -hmm. And I think this board... Is so interesting because it completely speaks to that. What do these people love about Star Wars? That it's not pro war. They like droids, the scope of it, space and lightsaber battles. The force. The force. You yeah. know, like this, that is what, when people think, when people are asked what they love about Star Wars, that's what they love. Mm-hmm. The Jedi, the force. You know the the dark side. They like the 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 force. Really, the force. Mm-hmm. You know all that stuff on. And I mean, I think it's interesting that they're talking about the outer rim, and you know, obviously, I think in that area there's going to be more stuff that's not about the Jedi, but people like that stuff too. But what people when people think Star Wars, they think about the Jedi. Yeah. So like going forward, yeah, doesn't make any sense. Going back is what makes sense. 
And I think that this is so interesting because it, com yeah. it completely speaks to that. If you're looking at what these people who write Star Wars, what they love about Star Wars is that, which mm -hmm. is what we love about Star Wars. So, there which you is go. probably why great minds so, think alike. Which is probably why the books are so good. Exactly. All right. So uh, this whole thing is going to kick off in August. Uh, if there's only something in August that happens Star Wars related. I know. I can't I think of what I don't remember. That is. Oh yes, it's Star Wars Celebration, and it says right here they're kicking it off. Uh, the first book is going to be Star Wars: The High Republic. Uh, what's it called? Right Light of the Jedi, written by Charles Soule. Uh, along... Is it going to be a novel? It's going to be. It's a novel. It's a novel. Does he normally do the comics? He does. He's written several novels, non-Star Wars related. So he's, mm. you know, he's writing a novel. Look actually. at that. Uh, that um, a Chewbacca type. A Wookiee, Wookiee Jedi. Wookiee. Yeah, I people care. have been talking about a Wookiee Jedi. Well, what, Kirstie? Well, there was a Wookiee Clone Jedi in Clone Wars. Wars. Yes, yes, exactly. A, kid, a baby one, a kid. Now a something happened. It's a great disaster that happens that kind of kicks everything off and we're learning about these villains called the Nile which they're being described as space Vikings um, and kind of the current theme again if you watch that video uh, they're talking about you know the, the core idea is what scares the Jedi mm -hmm. is kind of what they wanted to put in there so it's all going to kick off not sure what this great disaster is um, talked a lot in the video, of course, about how, you know, they're Jedi in the Outer Rim, almost like Texas Rangers trying to keep the peace. And it's funny because I keep thinking about the idea because uh, whenever I watch a Western, you know, I think about the old times. I know there's one time I think you and I were talking about this back in the Old West where, you know, you're, you're a person, you go out to the Old West and, and you, you know, farm some land or something like that and it's yours, right? But... Somebody comes along with a gun who's a you know quicker draw than you, kills you, and just says, "Hey, I'm taking this because I can." Because there's no law to stop there, you know. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the outer rim is. And again, like in the Wild West, you have the rangers out there to try to keep the peace. I think this is going to get with the Jedi in this too. So again, space western going right back to you know George Lucas's original concept idea for Star Wars, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, but yes, and then, okay, so we got uh, Star Wars High Republic comic. This one's going to be written by Kevin Scott. You also have kind of a... Um, kid a, one. A kid one. Uh, adventures, which, you know, with the Star Wars comics, you have like Clone Wars Adventures and just Star Wars Adventures, and those are slanted more towards younger people. Uh, Dan Daniel, Jose Older, is going to be writing that one. You also have Justina Ireland, which is going to be writing uh, what they call a middle grade novel, uh, High Republic, A Test of Courage, and Claudia Gray, a young adult novel, Into the Darkness. And again, this is all just phase one of what they want to do. Um, I'm sure at Celebration, we're going to get much more about what they want to do with it, how they want to roll out. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So just starting off, I know we've already talked about it. Um, general ideas. Lisa, what do you think? I think I'm super excited about it. I mean, the I have been saying this for quite a while now. The books are by far my favorite part of the Star Wars universe. I would much rather reread one of the books than watch just most of the films at this point. Um, the books, I just have found so much that I have enjoyed from the books over the last, what, I don't know, 10 years. And no, not quite eight that Eight years, seven years, I think years, whatever. it's like six years. Whatever, anyway. I mean, I, I love the books. I love the books. They're so, there's so much in them. Um, I mean, and granted, I am a book lover all my life. So me gravitating toward the books isn't necessarily saying much. Um, but really, I, I just I just can't say enough about how good the books are in the Star mm -hmm. Wars universe. Well, so I love that. I'm super excited about it. When they, when they announced the Project Illuminate. Project, Project Luminous. Luminous. Uh, one thing that, you know, I was excited about, because they said it was going to be a collaborative effort, but you also had two of what my favorite Star Wars writers are right now. Mm -hmm. Charles Soule, who's my favorite comic book author right now, mm -hmm. and Claudia Gray, who's my favorite book author right now. Now, the others are great, too, you know, because mm -hmm. I love their stuff as well. But, you know, just putting those two names attached to it got me excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just excited to see who else ends up contributing. Yes. Because, I mean, if you look at the original roundtable they have there, there's a lot of people there contributing ideas to this. So I'm sure in the next round there's going to be even more of these authors that have written things that have been amazing. Um, so, I yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for this. Yeah, I mean, it's just... 
it's it's a decision on where they go with because again you're 200 years before the Phantom Menace and you know like like we've talked about uh, what what why we said you need to go back is not only to show the Jedi but also go far back enough to where you know you're you're in new territory. Um, people are saying even with the films, go back to Old Republic thousands of years ago, which I'm you know a little surprised they didn't go. Further. further back yeah i, yeah. I 200 years i didn't think was quite far enough but then again this so then again raises the question as well if they're going 200 years back here are the movies going to go thousands of years back you know mm. you know i mean i mean what again it leaves a big old question mark as well, what they're going to do with the movies that is interesting point because since people have been hoping for a new uh old republic films maybe the fact that they're going to do these stories only 200 years back is because they didn't want to touch on that old Republic time period yet because they're saving it for Yeah, because they're, they're going thousands of years back versus only a couple of year, hundred years back. And the thing about it is, too, is when you're going 200 years back, um, you still have familiar Star Wars characters that are alive, mm-hmm. namely Yoda. Yeah, but it says they're not going to do that. I would, I, yeah, I would be completely shocked if you don't at least see or mention Yoda at any point in any of these books. I mean, I'm just saying, it specifically says in that article that they will not be touching on characters that we already know. I don't know if that means anything, but it says it. I, I read it in here, wherever you found that article. Where, the first one? Okay. Yeah, the first thing you were looking at. It said in there that they will be, um, that they were not going to be having characters we already knew. This period of Star Wars time will not overlap any of the film, any of the film series, features or series. series currently planned for production, given creator partners. Best, says production, nothing about the characters. Mm, I guess. I mean, so yeah, so I mean, because Yoda's still around, he's the about 600. Like uh, exactly, so he's still around. Chewbacca, you know, he's pretty old too. Um, mm-hmm. And other, you know, I thought about too, of course, because we were talking about him yesterday, or I sent that meme yesterday. Hondo, how old is he? How long does his species live? I don't know. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, another one, you know, just throwing it out there. R2-D2. We have no idea how old that droid is. That's true. So it could be... I, I completely agree. We need to get new characters. I want new characters, uh, new stories, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, having a touch of the old is fine. But it's cool that, you know, I want to go to familiar planets too. I want to go and see what Coruscant's like. Right now, you know, it's the height of the Republic, the height of the Jedi. What's it like? I want to go to, you know, I don't know, Morband or, you know, something like that. Or, you know, planets that we're somewhat familiar with. And, of course, let's make new planets. But also, when you're talking about this, it all sounds really great. You know, Jedi, height of their power, you know, they're like Texas Rangers. All sounds really cool. But you got to give me the characters. You know, you got to give me the, the the characters to latch on to that I'm going to care about. Otherwise, all the rest of it just it isn't worth a damn. Yeah. But, again, going back to the authors, knowing what Clardy Gray writes like, knowing what Charles Soule writes like, I have no doubt there's going to be uh, some yeah. good stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, that's what my, I would say, if you're looking at an author who can give you new characters that you can become immediately attached to, just read Lost Stars. Mm-hmm. I mean, Lost Stars takes place right in the middle of stuff that we know, but it's characters we don't. And it does not take you long to become completely enwrapped in their lives of those characters that she created. I mean, you legitimately care about what happens to them by the end of that novel and, you know, just how their lives are intertwined. I mean, I think if anyone can bring in a new character and make you feel an attachment to them in one novel, Claudia Gray can do it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so I want to talk, this one's my favorite picture. And that I, is I'm, a cool picture. I'm very close to putting this as my, mm. as my, I know, I, oh, I, I was going to get to that. Sorry, oh. I forgot your computer is a touch screen now. <laughs> we just got a new computer. <laughs> she touched <laughs> I touched it and it the moved. screen and okay. it moved. <laughs> so this, I'm, I'm honestly thinking about making this my Facebook wallpaper because it's just so cool. But just to go, I want to start on the right and kind of go that way. So first off, we have this masked Jedi here or whatever. It's like a ninja. Uh, that black saber. That's cool as shit. That's pretty cool. It's not the dark saber, no, no, but it's a black it's a saber. saber. Cool. Okay. And of course, you pointed out we have a uh, Dothamir looking gentleman. Is that just there. one or there's, there's two, two of them? them. Yeah, yeah, there's two of them. Brothers. Look at the hilt too. The hilt on that really cool Ooh, uh, you like know a, i mean like look at nice. look at all their lightsaber hilts they're very cool and stuff like that mm-hmm. we have another gentleman standing next to him double bladed lightsaber that's not red no nope. okay that's awesome. we got that too uh moving on a little bit further 
Um, what do we have in the bottom left here? Ooh, a wolf! Is, is that a loth wolf? What? It is. Oh my. Look at that cool lightsaber yeah, on the end. Go. Look at that. Double, double. No, remember, okay, remember, um, um, you know, the vision, dark ray. Yeah, yeah. She had kind of that double thing going on. That flipped into it something. It flips like, into yeah. a full double. I mean, we double. don't know if that We don't know if that's that, it, but... too, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a good explanation Is it just me, or it, could be. does this guy look like Carl or Ben? <laughs> the guy floating is the yeah. one who doesn't have his lightsaber ignited on. and yeah he's just kind of floating it looks like, like carl but i'm just saying if they want to make this casting, into a movie like casting, he's already boom, casted right there exactly <laughs> so one thing about the story series like they said it's you know it's multiple books and multiple comics that um you know as a comic book long time comic book reader one thing i love about the marvel cinematic universe is that it feels like a comic universe because each character or story has their own individual title that you can just follow. But then if you put it together, you know, they, the characters go in and out of each other's titles. They can come together for one big title like the Avengers. But, you know, you get a piece of the pie, which is satisfying. Or you can, you know, put it with the rest of the pieces to make a whole pie, so to speak. And they're talking about this is what it's going to be like. You know, you, you know, if you want the full piece of the full scope of the story you're gonna have to check out that YA novel or that middle grade novel to get you know all the characters bouncing in and out um, introduced to all of them and as a, again as a long time comic reader I'm used to something like this but I wasn't planning on checking out a middle grade novel but now I might have to but up until now we haven't done that I mean no. over the last and there's stories uh, yeah yeah there's... I mean over the last you know since like the rise of uh, Skywalker, that one book, whatever, something resistant, I yeah, didn't even there, bother, uh, you know? There, yeah, there have been several of the ones that are written for children that I haven't read. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm hoping someday to read them either to or with Nora when she starts to get... When, actually, then I might be... This is totally another topic, but... Um, those ones, I mean, I, I think they make them where if you want to read those ones for your kids with your kids, it just adds, but it's not necessary. Yeah. Like, you're not missing anything if you don't read them, but it just adds to your to the whole experience mm -hmm. if you do. Okay. Which is, I think, how all the books are supposed to be with the Star Wars universe. Well, That's why we've said before, one of the reasons it bothers me when they don't, like, throw little snippets from the books into the films is because the books are there to support... The films, the, the movies, and the t series, right? Yes. And they they don't they just don't use them well enough in that respect. Like, what would it kill them to throw some of this universe into the film so people who have read the books would be like, oh, I know that character, you know? Okay, so let's 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 talk about that real quick because you know I I told you I listened to the John Campion show and him and uh, Robert Meyer Burnett were talking about you know how disappointed they were that something like this that took you know. Years of planning and collaborating, uh, sitting down with the story group and kind of, you know, thinking about how it's all going to go. And we got none of that for essentially, essentially what Star Wars is, which is a film franchise. And how they long were, have we been saying that? Exactly. That's, that's the whole problem with this, you know, new era of Star Wars films where they're just like, Oh, you're you're a new director who's hot right now. Great, you want to make a Star Wars movie? Great. How do you want to do it? Okay, just do it. Just do whatever you want. I know it doesn't make any sense to me why they haven't utilized the story group. I mean, I've been saying this for years. I, I mean, every time we talk about the films, that's my primary issue: is they have this amazing story group there. Who I mean. Pablo, Pablo Hidalgo is just sitting there waiting for people to ask him. He's staring at the window of his cup of coffee. I know, right? <laughs> like, he's he's there. He he can tell you anything you want to know. You need um, a, a new admiral for your, you know, the fleet. Imperial fleet. Do we have anybody that's been in the books that we might be able to use? Huh. Who would I ask? Oh, no one there to ask. Better just make somebody up. Or if you're J.J. <laughs> Abrams, just be like... Uh, I'm the director. I know everything, so I'm just going to write whatever I want to yeah. write. It just has never made sense to me that they haven't utilized the story group better. So I am hoping that this is showing the beginning of a new time where they're well, gonna in, start utilizing in, yeah. the story group film, more. Hopefully, yes. I mean, to I think, make better films. I think again, this is also kind of testing the waters a little bit. Um, you know, giving us this kind of thing that. You know, people are expecting, again, for the films uh, to go back 
further, of course, and be about the Jedi. This could be, you know, testing grounds for how are people responding to the stories of these Jedi? Mm -hmm. Do they like it? Do they want more of it? Do they think, you know, I mean, the main thing, of course, you know, there's a difference between obviously people that, you know, would will read the comics and the books to just the general movie audience that goes and sees a Star Wars movie. And they, they have to think about, you know, just because you and I like this, Will the general public be interested in going out and seeing it? No. I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think the vast majority of people are not going to read a book. I mean, as sad as that makes me about our our world, I mean, it's true. It, it's a fact. I mean, I can't even... I think I read a statistic. I don't even remember what it was, but it was something that made me almost sick to my stomach, was the, the percentage of people that have not read a book since high school. Mm-hmm. And I literally was flabbergasted by the the percentage. I can't remember what it was, but it it hurt my heart a little bit as somebody who loves books so much. And it's so weird just to get off a little topic about there are books for everybody. Everybody. I mean, whatever your interest is, there's a book out there. Just find it and read it. Yeah. Well, and it's so easy now because they literally will read them to you. <laughs> you don't even have to get the That's book. how I get my reading in. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, every time I talk to somebody, I mean, like, I'm in a book club. I've been in a book club for years now with some of the, the you know, women in my old neighborhood. And every time I say to people, oh, yeah, I'm in a book club. And they're like, well, how do you have time to read? And I'm like... I just listen to the books mm-hmm. these days. I mean, I get it. People's lives are busy. You have kids and work. And I mean, I can't ever, I, I don't even know when I would sit down. Well, I know when I would sit down with a book, it would be at 930 at night and I would fall asleep. <laughs> so that is why I choose these days to listen to audiobooks because it's something I can do while I'm doing other things. I mean, I listen to audiobooks while I'm cooking. I listen to them while I'm cleaning, while I'm sewing. You know, while I'm driving, like, that's what I listen to in my time because it's interesting. It gives my my mind something to do all the time, which is how I am, though. I'm that kind of person. My mind doesn't ever shut off. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know not everybody's like that, and that that's fine. You're, you, it's, unfortunately, you're missing out on a very rich world of... Lots of things. Lots of things. Oh, so many things. Exactly. Okay, so let's steer back to Star Wars here. And not just on, uh, you know, public education and lack of reading, okay? But there are so many good books. I could just go on and on. I could give you so many books. Okay, so back to Star Wars. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, again, kind of the conflict within it. Um, Yes, people love the Jedi. They love the lightsabers. They love the struggle between the light and the dark. Do you think we're getting any dark like do you think we're gonna see some sith because at this point remember the sith are in hiding Mm -hmm. there are they are they maybe you know in the background still doing things because they didn't really reveal themselves till darth maul in the phantom menace they thought you know the jedi thought they were dead for what a millennia i think is what they said um Mm -hmm. do you think you know they are going to be in this behind the scenes are we going to see some lightsaber fights Uh, do you do you think that's going to be anywhere in this? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it does say what they love about Star Wars are lightsaber battles. And in their wish list, the Sith Empire is listed. So... But I'm seeing too also... I don't know. I mean, Sith Empire, definitely. But I'm saying not just like getting Sith. Because remember, not all dark side users are Sith. No, that's true. It's true. Yeah. So I think we could get some dark side users, maybe even some Jedi that go, go dark. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, we get that aspect, not necessarily having to be the Sith. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible. I definitely don't see, don't think you're going to see any outright Star Wars, like, Jedi versus Sith. Because, like you said, in this period of time, it, it didn't, it yeah. wasn't a thing. I mean, now, when you go back again. Back to the... Thousands of years yes. when the, the Sith before the Rule of Two. The Old Republic. Old Republic. I mean, an army of Sith, an army of Jedi. It's going to be that awesome. That would be awesome to see cinematically. We've seen previews of it, of the Old Republic video game, of just, you know, people with red lightsabers running at people with blue and green lightsabers. And it looks awesome. It looks amazing. So why not just give it to us as fast as they can? What the hell is the problem? I okay, don't know. But, and, but I do not think in the in these books you're going to be getting that kind yeah. of thing. And I think too, again, you're, they're talking about how 
you know, you're going the main villain are these guys, the Nile, of course, like your space. Which we don't Vikings, know anything about. Which them. we know nothing about. They may them. have force they powers might, for they, all we know. They might they're described as space Vikings, but also they talked about how yes, we're gonna get Jedi, but we're also gonna get smugglers and bounty hunters mm-hmm. and scoundrels and you know, the whole barrage of character types that we love right. seeing in the Star Wars universe. They're going to be in there, much like I would say that, you know, all those characters in the original trilogy or the prequels, like, you know, how Han, the the, the scoundrelous, you know, smuggler, was there to support Luke's story, you know, mm-hmm. or going back to, um, you know, the prequels um, where all, the Clone Wars, where all these people were there to help out, you know, Obi-Wan and Anakin or, you know, that stuff like that, you know, yeah. they're going to be there as as part of the story with the Jedi. I mean, I think if you if you look at what these Nile, I mean, we all we know about them is that they're calling them space Vikings, and I think what that implies is, well, let's get back. So basically, you know, thus far in like the Clone Wars and different things, those whenever you run into those kind of Wild West type characters, they're pirates, uh-huh. space pirates, yeah. right? Hondo is a pirate. Most of those people were pirates. Uh, lovable pirate. Lovable pirate. Not pilot, pirate. I said pirate. You said pilot. Anyway. He can fly a plane, they're too. They're pirates, right? So at that time, it wasn't so much... What, what the, the bad guys were bounty hunters or pirates. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, pirates. They wanted to steal your ship. They wanted to steal your stuff. Arr. But what the term, to me, what it implies when they're talking about a space viking is somebody whose goal is to expand their empire. Yeah. Like, they're looking for new places to take over. That's what I get from it. Yeah. They, that they're, they're out, like, on an expedition to expand. You know, it's like, again, like you said, you know, pirates. They want to take something, you know, they want to steal it. They want to take your th- stuff. They want to take your stuff where, you know, there's a difference between, again, like, uh, a person who wants to take your stuff Versus the pus person who just wants to kill you. Right, but I don't think that's what a Viking is. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you're looking at it that way. The difference between a pirate and a Viking, pirates are looking for treasure. Vikings are looking for land. Where do ninjas fall in? Ninjas are just ninjas. Damn it. I thought we were going somewhere with this. I mean, this. you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? The difference is pirates are looking for, for your money. They're looking for your treasure. Uh-huh. Vikings are looking for land. They're looking to expand their, their people. They are on a quest to expand to 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 find new horizons that that's what when you think about the vikings that's what that's what they did they they were not just trying to take your money and move on they wanted to take everything from you meaning your village your houses your your way of life somebody ever told the minnesota vikings they're not doing a very good job living up to their name (laughs) come on all right yes we got it vikings versus pirates we got that too but yes as we say there's going to be a bunch of different characters so Let's kind of wrap it up, and let's just say again we've we've touched on this before. If this is what they're thinking about for publishing, what do you think's going on in the film division? Oh God, I wish I knew. I mean, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't even. I can't even speculate what's going on in the film division because I haven't been able to. I mean, nobody had every. All of our predictions have been completely off base because they keep doing such ridiculous things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would think. That in the past year or two, them, the the powers that be in Star Wars and the film, seeing the popularity of The Mandalorian, seeing people's excitement for this new seri- season of The Clone, Clone Wars. Wars, seeing how interested people have been in the novels. I mean, think about it, Celebration. We couldn't even get Master and Apprentice. Every single day that book was freaking sold out before it even opened. Like, that has to mean something to them to see that people are are that interested in it, where the movies have not been well-received. And I would think <coughs> that they would be learning from that right now and making appropriate changes. But... I don't I don't know maybe that's expecting too much of it. My them. my thing is I think they're making too many changes. You know, uh, a lot of people sometimes criticize say Warner Brothers and how they handled the DCEU at being so reactionary to like things about Batman v Superman. So they changed Suicide Squad completely, they changed Justice League completely, being so reactionary and that's what I feel like Lucasfilm has done With the ever, ever since the last Jedi. They were no, so so reactionary. Yeah, yeah so yeah, reactionary. It was a you know, I mean, that's what they. You, you could feel it in Han Solo, even mm-hmm. though I enjoyed the film. You could feel definitely, obviously, feel it in, in the Rise of Skywalker. So, so reactionary. When you know, 
again, speaking from my own personal experience, looking at or hearing about what the original director Colin Trevorrow had in mind, it would have been fine. Yeah. You know, I think I it would have been I fine. I mean, I agree. But again, it's, it's a battle of personal opinion, though. They have. I think, that's, I think that's true. I think you can see that they have been in the films very reactionary. And I, for me, that's why I'm glad that we haven't had any film announcements yet. Because that tells me that they're not being reactionary, that they're thinking, that they're taking time to figure out what the next step should be. If they were going to be reactionary, then they would have already said, oh, this is how this, let's do this instead. Let's fix well, it and do this. And like, it, it, one of the criticisms, of course, of Kathleen Kennedy has been making announcements on directors, on writers, and on stuff, and mind. then changing it out. So yes. I'm glad that we haven't gotten a film announcement yet, because to me that says hopefully, that they're working on it and they're not making any quick, rash decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, but then again, that could just be the optimist in me that is hoping that's what they're doing. Well, I hope there's a group like this, you know, uh, made up with the story group and people at Lucasfilm and, you know, you can include Disney in the throw of it too of just, you know, a board like, you know, like like this one, you know, mm -hmm. what is Star Wars? Where do we want Star Wars to go? What do we like about Star Wars? They just you know? need to start getting directors who actually are Star Wars lovers instead of just pulling well, random directors out of their asses. Here's what it is. They, they everyone, obviously, in, in this day and age of filmmakers, everyone grew up on Star Wars. So everyone loves Star Wars. But you have to get people that know Star Wars, don't just don't know the films. Not just the films. That That's yeah, that's my point. And, sure, and you that's can what, easily again, find and, people that know Star Wars and that will say, oh, I love Star Wars, but then all they know is Luke and Leia. Well, I mean, go look at look at uh, just Dave Filoni for an example, okay? Obviously, he came in, he learned from the master himself, George Lucas, so he learned so much about the mythology of Star Wars, which is why he's able to, such, to tell such a good story. Mm -hmm. Then you have... John Favreau, okay, yes, he's a he's a Star Wars lover, of course, uh, dabbled in, you know, a little bit of Clone Wars voicing as well, teams up with Dave Filoni, and Filoni's teaching Favreau about mm -hmm. the Mandalorians, about the myth of Star Wars, mm -hmm. and it shows the care of the world in the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. You know, no, it's not just like, hey, I, I'm, I'm not you know, playing the Star Wars sandbox. I'm like, no, if you're going to play in that sandbox, you sit your ass down and you learn every grain of sand before you decide what you're going to do in that sandbox. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this goes right along, too, with how I've always said it, it really annoys me when actors take on roles like this and don't read the source material. Dominic Gleeson. I mean, Dom Hall. Dom Hall Gleeson, yeah. Dom Hall Gleeson. I mean, there's so many of them, though. He, You know, there's so many different actors who will take on a role that is well-established in books mm -hmm. and do zero homework on it. And so then you watch it and you're like, do they even, like, know what's happening? Like, I don't understand how the... I mean, and I know that, like, I, I don't know, maybe it's unrealistic. I would think if I was directing that film, I would make them read the fucking source material. Yeah. And it goes back to, like, say, you know, uh, actors who are cast, you know, oftentimes now, too, uh, on Instagram, like, you know, you, there's a picture of uh, Margot Robbie reading a Harley Quinn comic or um, uh, what's her name, Brie Larson reading a Captain Marvel comic. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be just for show, mm -hmm. but of course, you know, if you're playing a character that's been around for decades or a character that's already established mm -hmm. in some other medium or even, yeah. you know, the film Do medium, your homework. Do your homework. I mean, you're being paid enough fucking money. Do your homework. But I of mean, course, at the end of the day, too, it's not just... Of course, but it's actors, the, the directors, directors are the ones that and need to, storytellers. Right. And yes, exactly. I mean, the directors need to that that should to be if you're going to direct a film that is based on a book. I mean, I am so sorry to like, but you should read it and you should make the people in your movie read it. Just don't read the script. Just, I mean, read the script as well, obviously, but yeah. I mean, I just think it doesn't make any sense but, to me. Uh, I mean, what other industry do you get a job where you're paid even a fraction of that and you're not expected to know yeah. your background? Well, also, too, having to do with the fact that, you know, um, if you're going to work on something, like what I always tell people about, say, a, uh, X3, X-Men, okay, is you could tell someone who, who, who made that film or even wrote that film knew nothing about X-Men, okay? And if you're going to do something that's already established, again, much like this board, 
Find out why this character has been around for so long. Find out why this world, what people love about this world, mm -hmm. you know, and how you can bring that out before, you know, you just dive in. Yeah. I mean, it just, I, I know. I mean, I know that I said this before. It just frustrates me. It frustrates me as a book lover, especially. It just frustrates me when you like watch a movie and you're like, what are they doing? That no. isn't even the right like this nothing. Is, this nothing person is right. would not act this way at all. No, this it's is <laughs> not even remotely in their character. Kind of like when you watch the new Dumbledore. Oh my god! <laughs> I had to bring it up. Don't I had even to bring get it up. me started on the new Dumbledore. He's well, such okay, a not new in the sense of the today, but second Dumbledore. New as in not Richard Harris, who was the perfect Dumbledore. Rest in peace. There Richard you go. Harris. Okay, well, I think we've you know steered off topic and a little bit uh, next to the High Republic, uh, but needless to say, of course, I think we're both excited, given the fact that we both you know keep yeah. up with the books, you mm -hmm. more than me. Um, you know, I I read the comics though too. So as two Star Wars fans who do read the books, who do read the comics, it's exciting to see something like this happen. Um, and kind of what we've hoped it would be. I have another side note. Yes. Do you think this has anything to do with why they pushed back Thrawn? Possibly. Thrawn was supposed to be August, maybe? October? Burp? No, it's in October now. Oh. No, it was supposed it was to come supposed out in to May. Be May. It was supposed right, to be May. Because right. remember, it was going to come out the same time as uh, Queen's uh, yeah, Gambit new, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Right, that one. Exactly. Oh, I'm excited Which for I that. think that one, I think it's still, that one's on track. I, I think if so. It's available for, not yet. Pretty no, well, but they're talking too, you know, they were talking about how this is just one side still of the publishing. You know? Oh, there's I still mean, more. You yeah. still have the Thrawn trilogy coming. You still have, uh, they're finishing off Alphabet Squadron, you know. Mm -hmm, so this mm -hmm. isn't just all they're going to be this is doing. This a new era. This is just, mm -hmm. yeah, something they're doing along with it. Uh, which is great, you know, still have them working. And the authors talked about in the uh, interview at StarWars.com, again, uh, I set up a link on the Facebook group about how, you know, they're t the authors who have already written Star Wars stuff or are working on other Star Wars stuff besides the High Republic are, are just so happy to, to put little Easter eggs everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm excited for that too about, you know, going 200 years back. So some of these, you know, old Jedi relics that we might have seen in like comics or books or movies or whatever mm -hmm. show me that Ooh, i would love it i thought i had um where do they go at the end of um season two of rebels was it um what is that where's the temple at where's the sith temple at oh the i i yeah i can't think of it give me something that. like that not not exactly that but give me something like Hey, I know that place. That's from Rebels. Oh, this is how everything goes down. You know, don't. Yeah. Not, I'm not saying that specifically, but give me something that was referenced. That you know, they show up. This place is old, and then they realize. Well, I mean, we're getting a a, a loath wolf in there. Maybe we're going Bullshit. to Lothal. Maybe we're going to the Jedi Temple. There's temple on Lothal. Exactly. So That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so maybe. maybe we're getting some Jedi on Lothal. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, I think uh, we talked enough. Anything else you want to mention about Star Wars High Republic? I don't know. I could just keep We going could probably going. keep going on. Of course, we can go Star Wars forever, guys. But mm -hmm. time for you to fire back, of course, on the social media groups and Gmail account. Let us know what you think about Star Wars The High Republic. Were you disappointed that it was just uh, books and comics? Are you excited that it's just books and comics? Do you read books and comics or do you read anything in general? Apparently, according to statistics, you don't. And if you don't, please let me know and I'll happily give you some suggestions. Of course, we are always happy. Happy to give you suggestions um, as well. Um, but Fireback, let us know what you think, guys. Anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, Fireback, Facebook group, Twitter account, dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. You can find me personally, Slim Dayspring12, on Twitter and Instagram. That's it. Go out, enjoy your week, enjoy your lives, and until next time, may the force be with us all.